Hi everyone, I'm Martin and welcome to another great edition for Astronomy for Beginners and today I'm going to show you how to take pictures of the moon and here is my setup this is a, just a simple setup that I use to take this awesome picture of the moon which I've just taken yesterday so take a closer look at this image and see what you reckon to it so guys and girls what do you reckon do you want an image like this if you do I will show you how to do it and believe me it's not that difficult in fact it's really easy to do it's just that certain things you have to you have to do and edit your image so that you can get an image like that like a typical NASA style photo and you too can get an awesome image like this and with this video guide I'm actually going to show you exactly how to get that image so you too can enjoy and show your, uh, your friends and your family um, these pictures of the moon you've taken yourself now for beginners and monsters and newcomers into astronomy uh, people that start off in astronomy and they use a telescope for the first time they look at the moon the moon is probably the most popular target to go for because not only is it bright it's also an easy target to find and everyone who's in who just starting out in, into astronomy always uh, uh, use the telescope to look at the moon and again looking through the eyepiece and seeing all the mountains and the moon on, on the moon's surface you see the craters you name it you see a lot of detail and if you want to take pictures for yourself which during time people do want to take pictures then you too can take amazing pictures with a simple setup like this believe it or not the pictures that I've t that picture that I've just taken was actually using this setup this simple setup and all it is is just a normal altazium, altazimov mount which basically goes up and down, left and right. It may have uh, um, slow motion controls as well. It's all it is. It's just a normal mount on you know, on a tripod system. Okay, it's all it is. And again, you don't need an expensive telescope. In fact, if you're an owner of a DSLR camera, which is probably the best, I strongly advise for anyone who has a DSLR to uh, connect the telescope then if you want to find out how to connect the DSLR to your telescope please refer to my other video guide on how to connect a DSLR camera to your telescope now you don't need an expensive telescope in fact if you don't have a telescope but you do have a stock lens or you have a telephoto lens for your camera then that would be okay, that's all you need, you don't need a telescope however, not most of us have a telephoto lens system so this is another way to convert a, a camera system using the telescope as basically a telephoto lens it's the same principle it's just the telescope as well as you can use it uh, for normal use, for visual use you can use a telescope as a telephoto lens and again this simple setup and the pictures that are taken was only a 66 millimeter refractor and this equinox this skywatch equinox uh, refractor was you know the amount of detail that i got from it is absolutely amazing so you don't need an expensive telescope okay i mean this is quite a pricey telescope I agree but you can use an acromat refractor you can use a Newtonian reflector it doesn't really matter 
the main focus is is you want to take great pictures then any telescope or telephoto lens will give you that however there are a few basic uh, things you need to set up correctly so that once it's set up you're going to get good detail on the moon. It is very crucial that you get your telescope set up properly. And I will show you that as I set it up outside. Now, most of us don't have a DSLR camera. You can still take good pictures of the moon. Even if you've got a diagonal or an eyepiece, you can use an iPhone. Or, a, or any mobile phone or another digital camera and you can just take a shot over the eyepiece and take a shot from there and you can take awesome pictures like that however the images are, are okay but you're never going to get it perfect it might be slightly out at an angle uh, the image might be distorted it's, it's not perfect but you can get it there are ways to do it but this is why I recommend, uh, I recommend to beginners if you're gonna buy if you're gonna buy a camera and you can use it for astronomy or any other things, then get yourself a DSLR camera. And it doesn't matter what brand or make or whatever. It doesn't need to be an expensive DSLR camera. And believe it or not, you can get a really good camera like this. This is an 1100D Canon, second hand, probably costs around 60 to about 100 pounds second hands and that's all you need you just need a basic DSLR camera providing you can uh, take the uh, the lens system off and you have a t-ring and then a telescope adapter then you're fine you can get some amazing results with a basic DSLR camera you do. so the choice is yours it doesn't really matter what camera you're going to use now another top tip is with your setup and uh, this is a release cable it can also be known as a bulb or a shutter release cable all right and all this is is just an, a remote cable that attaches to the camera and basically when your camera is switched on all this does is enable you to take photos uh, by operating the shutter without touching the camera or the telescope and for six to ten pounds you can get a good you just need a one with a press with a press button one okay that's all you need you don't need an expensive one or Gucci one you just want something that you can operate the shutter and take the shot that's all it is it's just a, a normal switch and you can take the shot one by one and you're not touching the mount the telescope and whatever because you don't want any sudden movement when you're taking the shot if you do you will distort the images of the moon and you're not going to get decent results however if you don't have one of them then it's not to worry you can still take pictures of the shot uh, of the of the moon okay you just got to be very careful uh, when you t press on the on the actual shutter press or button here and just take the shot lightly just take like and there are ways to do it but again this will make life just a tad easy okay so you get yourself one of those so again I, as you can see my moon picture I've just seen you two can take amazing uh, pictures and again you don't need expensive equipment to do it so that's the main key of this video guide and again you two can take awesome pictures and show it to your families and friends and and you, they'll be amazed it'll be the best thing you know not most people have seen the moon in close detail and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you I'm going to set this telescope outside and I'm going to show you how to set the DSLR camera to the telescope and all that now this is some of the settings that I'm going to set for the camera is specifically for the telescope but there are many other things and aspects uh, particularly if you have a big telescope then the settings might not be exact the same okay so be aware of that don't automatically assume 
that the settings are guaranteed because that all depends on many factors it also depends on the telescope you're using it also depends on what camera you're using it also depends on your sky conditions it can, you know, and all I'm here is to show you a, an easy way to get the correct exposures the correct settings and, and again when you see it how I do it you too can do the same okay but again my settings my DSLR settings will work for this telescope so it all depends on what telescope you use so again depends on the ISO speed but usually with the ISO speed on, on the moon you only need an ISO 100 so you don't need a big uh, you don't need a lot of ISO for the moon because the moon is very bright but your exposure times may be different compared to the telescope you're going to use obviously with this it's, it's different also another top tip is when you like for most beginners and monsters we all get excited when we've got a brand new telescope and we want to use the telescope we want to actually start using the telescope and you'll set it up and then you're just waiting for the moment when the moon comes up and you're thinking okay I'm ready to go stop right there even though your telescope looks to me it's ready to go believe me another it, everyone does this all the beginners always make this mistake is before you go out make sure you get your finder scope or your red dot finder aligned okay very crucial that you do that because what you're trying to do is you're trying to get this aligned to the main tube of your telescope it is very crucial that you do that because what it what will happen is if you're trying to point the telescope to the moon or any other given subject if this is not aligned and you're trying to find the object you can spend all night trying to find things and believe me if this isn't aligned and you're pointing this to the moon it's not going to go into the uh, image screen it's not going to go into the actual main objective lens or or the mirror of your telescope so make sure be beginners newcomers and monsters get your finder scope or your red dot finder aligned properly and again do this during the day point it in a subject please refer to my video guide on finding scopes and, uh, and all the optical aiming devices video guide please refer to that and I actually show you this in detail on how to align your aiming device within the main scope don't make the mistake of not Put it back, put it on there, and then trying to find the moon. Because if this isn't aligned, you're not going to get the image into the main tube. So make sure get your setup properly aligned. Once this is done, then you're ready. All you got to do is get it outside and just wait for it to get dark. And so what we're doing now is going to go outside and show you how to do it. So, we've waited now till dark and the full moon is now approaching in my location. As you can see, I've got the Equinox 66 and my DSLR Canon 600D ready to go. As you can see, you don't need an expensive mount, you just need a basic mount. And with the camera, you also need a quick release. Also, make sure that your red dot finder or your finder scope is properly aligned on the main tube so that you can point directly to uh, the moon without any worries so as we can see the moon's nice and bright up there it's not a clear night but as you can see I've got uh, Jupiter directly across it which looks awesome so what we're going to do is we're going to switch on the camera like so first things first we want to with the settings here you need to set your ISO the correct setting 
is around about 100 okay this is the setting that I use also have your uh, photo setting set to a RAW or JPEG or both once it's that set you don't need any exposure limits and the exposure time now the secret to the exposure time is depending on your skies and your location and light pollution depends on the amount of exposure times you need so to run it off we just adjust the edge setting okay and we'll set it to 1 and 100 then we switch on the, the live view button on this side okay we then using the red dot finder align it towards the moon so you're going to use the mount tilt it and get it aligned so we've got it aligned I've switched off the flash because you can see now the moon is very bright it's very in fact it's too bright now the camera is not helping much but you can it, as you can see you can just vaguely see some hint of detail now the secret the technique that I use is you need to dim down the exposure setting you need to dim it down to a point that you can see all the dark areas okay you don't want a bright moon because when you stack and you reprocess the image what will happen is you, you lose some of that detail so you, what you do is you're going to try and get as much of the contrast as possible and to do this we flick over to our uh, exposure time button uh, and basically set the exposure time now uh, because it's very bright the, the secret is is to minimum it down all the way down okay so you can start seeing the detail as you can see now you can see more most of the detail also uh, the key the most important aspect is with the moon being quite bright uh, on the telescope itself you need to have this focused so to get it focused we've got the moon we've got some detail but I'm not convinced that I'm accurately focused so what we do is we press this button here at this side here this will give you the magnification so in other words I've touched these buttons here and I want to extend the view okay the moon will be really big on the live view so as you move the telescope just move, move them out and as you can see you can see some of the surface detail there okay so it's reasonably focused uh, and again minimize back to the original picture so if you're not focused okay you need to back and forth until you get a very sharp focus and using the uh, that function will enable you to get as, as much of the focus as possible okay using the magnification button will allow you to see if you are properly focused all right it's very crucial that you get your focusing spot on so as you can see I'm moving the focus tube on the telescope and as you can see to this point once you've got it to a point where you can see a lot of detail and it's well and crisp you lock the the focus all right using the lock key okay once you're locked in place okay that's you focused the reason why I say to get focus is if you're not quite focused and you take an image your image will not be uh, as sharp and you need to get it spot on okay it's very crucial you get that spot on so we'll go back to the middle setting so back to the normal setting now we have a focused image of the moon uh, this is reasonably dim but again you set the exposures down and I find found about 400 to about 600 or 640 of a second is a good uh, sort of contrast and you just need to get it so you get it uh, if you if you up the gain to 400 you can see it gets too bright so you knock it back down to 500 or 640 
or 800 depending what you want but around about 640 on this camera is, is quite a good uh, contrast so you're not going to lose all the detail in there all right you don't want to have a full bright image like that you know if you had set to 100 you just can't see the detail all right you need to minimize that exposure time so minimum it down to a manageable level so that then you will get a lot of dark areas you can see and you can see the moons and the valleys and that and again just go back to your main uh, magnification zoom in see if you're focused uh, and you see yeah, I've got quite a bit of detail in there uh, my image is focused and there you go and then we just go back to that and basically all you do is now as you can see on this display I use a setting called grid line now as you can see I've got grid lines on the camera and to set that you press menu and as you scroll across through your menu screen you want to see where it says grid display grid display all you do there is select that and you select grid 1 that will give you the grid display you then click off the menu, menu and you go back to the main menu screen so now what we're going to do now we've got the correct exposure we've got the grid line set we've got a focus set all we got to do now is get the uh, move the telescope mount uh, quick nudges with all takes or use your slow motion controls one of the two and what you want to do is get it get the moon picture bang on in the center of your grid okay so once you're there do not worry about the grid line this will not show up in your images and what you want to do is once you're happy you've got the the moon shot you uh, right what you do is uh, what I prefer is switch off the, the live view okay so you back off onto the main menu screen and then you take using your quick release your quick release here take 10 to about 20 maybe 30 shots so just take quite a few shots okay and you take quite a few shots now the reason why you take it off live view is to help um, minimize the amount of noise now because I'm using a low ISO setting you won't get much of the noise so what I'm doing I'm just taking series of pictures all the way through okay with without the live view and just keep, keep just keep taking loads of pictures okay that's all you need to do and just keep taking loads and loads of pictures now you can set it on lock because you can do it like this and it'll take loads of shots like that all right if you wish you know i will i'd rather take it in stages so take a, a shot see if you're happy with it take another shot the moon will move away slightly off the center so again uh, go into your live view okay and recheck the position so you click off that click onto a live view and then as you can see it just moved off slightly so you go back and self nudge the telescope get it in the center of the grid square and then once you're happy switch off the live view and then take another shot and just keep doing that all right and you just keep taking it till you're happy with what you've got all right just take these pictures all right and just keep keep taking one by one okay once you're happy you've got loads of uh, moon pictures what we're going to do now is we're going to go back inside and I'm going to show you some software that I use to process my excellent moonshot. So basically what we're going to do is if you want a stunning image of that moon, what I just did, you two, following my, uh, this, pro, uh, this process that I use, you two can have an absolutely amazing NASA style image of the moon. So again, We'll go back inside and I'm going to show you the software and how to process the moon picture. So now we're going to process the moon shots after you just captured them using your DSLR camera. Now you can take an AVI file but the reason why I'm doing this is taking still shots is that you tend to get a much more refined image if you take still shots. 
And again, using the EVI files, you can you can stack these using Registack six. But however, using Registack six will crash with steel shots. So if you have loads of raw or steel shots or JPEG files like this, they tend to just crash a lot. So ideally, um, even with the raw files as well, some sort of reason that Registack six doesn't like. So try and get rid of some of the raw files, which I don't really like doing, but I have to because the Registack 6 won't allow me to do it. And if I do try to stack the JPEG files or the RAW files together, it just simply crashes Registack 6. I don't know if it's the, the program is a bit outdated, but it is a real shame. So ideally what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of some of the RAW files and you can indicate them as CR2. So we'll get rid of all the raw files. So we highlight every single raw file we have. And to doing this, I'm holding down the control button and clicking each individual raw file. Then we delete them after right click, click, press delete. So basically, it just leaves my JPEG files. So we've got rid of the raw files. And what we're going to do is, is we're going to use a program called PIP. And PIP is a really good program. I open this up, and PIP is, is basically a freeware program which you can download. And PIP, what that does is, it's a really good program where if you want to stack uh, individual frames into an AVI file. So what this is what we're doing is all those JPEG files, we're going to convert it into an AVI file. In other words, we're, we're turning it into a video. Now, you don't have to use PIP. You can take a recording of an AVI file and do it directly to Registack 6. Well, I've done it so that you could take separate pictures and then convert it that way. And it, all it is, you just click on add image. You basically find your desktop, find your moon pictures. You click on one picture and then you sh hold down shift and then click to the bottom. Open up. Okay, basically what it's doing is it's doing to join mode. In other words, you're going to combine all your JPEG files into one format, okay? And it'll give you uh, the actual image there. So what you do is then, is because this uh, because PIP is basically a planetary and lunar processing program, we are going to select different options. Now the good thing about PIP is if you're imaging planets or the moon and the moon appears to be everywhere or the planet seems to be dancing about, PIP will enable to centralize the planet or the moon in, in the center of the picture. And it's really good how it does it. I don't know how it does it, but it is clever. And it will keep the planet or the moon centered at all times. So when you stack it using Registack 6, you'll be able to process a lot of the images together at a resulting image when you start using Registack 6. Now, I'm just going to click on the, the lunar full disk. Basically, we've got the whole disk of the moon, so we're going to select that option. Um, usually, different options will give different effects, but we've got 29 frames, and we're going to stack it and pull together as an AVI file. As a video, and also we join it as a join mode. And what we'll do is now we go on different options, check these options 
to suit your needs every option uh, every setting has different effect but if you look at my settings here there's not much to tick on that section the processing part is you can convert it to monochrome or color I'm going to convert this into color so I take that box off click on uh, the options quality options you can highlight how many frames you you're doing but because we've only got 29 frames there's no real need to do a certain amount of frames so we don't tick that box we enable the quality estimation and basically will pin some of the crappy frames and it will keep all the good frames it will then if you click on the total brightness logarithm it will it will help to keep the brightness central on each of the frames we don't need animation problem uh, add options uh, we click on output options now this is basically the main one we're going to use mostly we tick the AVR file okay I leave all the options as they are I don't want to confuse you guys and girls on the settings but if you tick on the AVR file leave the settings alone and basically all we're interested in is creating uh, the, the directory where you want the actual video to be placed so we want our video to be placed into desktop and onto the moon folder so that is our reference point you can call it uh, whatever moon we'll call it moon avi okay we'll call it moon avi so that'll be our video so what it's done now is doing the processing you, you press on start processing and it won't take long because you've only got a few files so after pip has finally stacked all your separate frames into one AVR file you should get a file like this so we click on the video and that is the video now it's very short but what we're trying to do is we're using that video so that we can stack it into Registack 6 now for reasons why I've done that is because some of the separate files because there's a lot of information contained with that still shots so for some reason Registack 6 doesn't like it and I don't know why it crashes it keeps crashing a lot of times so it's always best to do a, a small little AVI file a little video for it to work now also the reason why I'm using Registack 6 is because I like when you stack the images you can stack once you get your final image you can adjust all the sharpness levels and I like the processing involved with the Registack 6 because you can get some really good detail which you can pop out from the image and Registack 6 has the best uh, sharpening tools around I've never seen anything that can beat it not even Photoshop can bring out all this uh, high-res uh, sharpness and to this day Registack's been quite an old program around about six maybe seven years old it still does some amazing results using the, the 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 sharpening tools that's provided and for, to be honest with you Photoshop just can't beat it and that's why I use Registack 6 so I've got my video so we're happy with our moon video and we're going to click on to Registack 6 so we've got Registack 6 and we're going to select our image so we're going to desktop highlight our moon picture this is our video we click on there now just be careful with this menu make sure you have it as AVR files and again you can still have your still frames and you can, you can stack all your still frames together but if you do like 10 frames or more of the still shots it just doesn't like it and again there is no option for the raw pictures which is a real shame because I like taking photos in raw 
and it's the best way to do it to get all that information out out of your images but unfortunately uh, Registax 6 doesn't work very well at all with raw images and might not work at all so highlight you can do it with JPEG but again because we use an AVR file we select the AVR file okay it seems to be in pro but just don't remember we've 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 taken shots in color so we highlight that now a lot of the shots um, if you go on this this toolbar is you're going to pick out the best shots available okay and you're just going to scroll down to see if there's anything that's uh, shimmered or any detail that's lost but with this image here I've got every uh, every picture in here is crisp so I'm not going to I'm not really concerned about any bad images in the picture so pick out one of your best uh, high res pictures either way from your 29 frames doesn't sound a lot but just pick out the best one okay and I'm not really bothered I'm going to select 16 and it's easy all you got to do is go into the line and then set your line points you can do it individually but to be honest with you I like to use it with the default setting and basically use Registax 6 to pick out the line points for you okay you, you don't really want to go in every single detail and what these align points will do is will help to set uh, the moonshot in a fixed position and pick out some of the most detailed parts of the image so that then you can just when you stack it you'll stack the resulting images together and give you a nice uh, good crisp image now don't bother with all these settings I've never used them and I'm not going to use them I'm going to keep it simple and again because we have 29 frames the best frames I select the best frames and then pick out select the best frames and because I have 29 I'm gonna have like 29 frames so I'm gonna select 29 frames either way the choice is yours but again go for 20 frames so if there's any bad frames out there it'll bin the nine frames and keep the 20 then you go into a line and what does it what it will do register at six it will then uh, be able to align all the good frames together once it's done that you click on limit and this is one thing you've got to particularly take notice is because we're using still shots and I picked out some of the best frames now this is really good uh, alignment actually because if you look here if you look at this bottom here it says low quality don't let that concern you the, the main concern is the percentage at the moment I'm at 101.88 percent and there is no hardly any movement between the images to shift in other words when I'll start that image I'm going to get a really good razor sharp image but again you might have images where they have moved slightly but don't worry Ideally, you want to aim between 75% or above to get a good sort of stacked image. So this is pretty good alignment, and I'm actually quite impressed with that. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on and highlight stack. So we click on that, and what Registax will do, it will stack the best 20 images together to give you a final image. So that is now stacked. Obviously, I've not got many frames, so it's not, it doesn't take long to stack. And then what I'm going to do is, is I highlight the menu wavelet. Now, this is why I like Registax 6, because Registax 6 has the best sharpening tools around. I can't find any program that can beat this so far, despite it being so old. It's just a shame that I can't stack the still shots with this program because it just keeps crashing. Hence the reason why we need to do an AVI file. So, here's our image. As you can see, because we used PIP, 
we've got the moon in the center of the position so there's no real need for it to be move about so pip has done a really good job and also i've noticed using pip is actually made the moon a little bit closer as well so that's a good thing so and what we're using now because we've got the single picture here with uh, Reggie Stack 6 we are going to adjust a few levels so first off a good setting I always go is adjust the denoise at levels so like 0 0.5 0 0.10 0 0.15 and then do again on the sharpening uh, wavelets uh, or say 0 0.110 120 and obviously 130. So I, I always start stick to those little settings. You can go higher, you can go lower, depends on your taste. But be careful when you up the uh, the sharpening tools, you may get a very, you may get a different effect on your images. And sometimes if you do too much of the sharpening, it will make it not stand out in the image. It make it look like a cardboard cutout or looks false you want to get it so it's sort of sharpened but a lot more of a realistic image you don't want it to be over sharpened then it just looks like a painting or something like that or it just just doesn't look great so what i do is i i you got these slide on bars and i always like to slide them up to about this is the main sharpening tool to about 82 percent now again the sharpness is just picked it up but don't forget, it's only done a small part of it. Because we use still shops and in and, and its stacked image, there's a lot of detail. So Registax can only process a certain small proportion in that image. So to complete the process, you just click on do all. And, and then what we have here, we have uh, a lot more detail pop up. As you can see in the outline here, we've done too much of the sharpening which is not great. We don't want to put a false line or false color in there. So we need to just drop down the sharpness a bit. So we drop it down to about 67 and then we do all again. Okay, a little bit better, but again, we still got uh, like a, a false line. So we just keep lowering it down till we get a, a sort of decent image, but not too over processed. So we just keep doing it to you get, and as we see here, a little bit better. <clears throat> as you can see here, a little bit better, but again, we still need to lower it down. And again, the, the details really just popped out a lot more. Okay, now this is better. Now I'm gonna sort of up the denoise a bit, and then we're gonna do all again. Okay, a lot better now. So now what we're going to do is we adjust the other levels, levels, and we're just going to do the sliders here, do all again, and just keep doing it until you're happy with it. And again, just keep doing it. If you do too much, you can just back it off a little, or you can just readjust it again, and just keep do adjusting these levels. You know, everyone has different tastes, and you 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 adjust the levels to suit your needs. Okay. It doesn't really concern about how much you want to put in, but again, as long as you're happy with that image and you're happy with the settings. Now, if you make a mistake and you do too much of the processing, then don't worry. You just highlight on there where it says reset wavelets. So where my mouse button, you just click on that button and it will totally reset all the uh, wavelets. So again, as you can see here in this picture, I've got a really good image there, and there's a lot of detail that I've got in that uh, that moon picture. But again, to on a full moon to get this amount of detail is pretty awesome. So again, we select your your functions like you can adjust your histogram, okay, and if you want to like uh, readjust by stretching the object to just make the object a little bit brighter but also not to make it too dim you don't want to uh, sort of put into the pro, uh, cut into the image like the like here if you make a mistake you just press reset as, as you can see here the picture is that you want to bring out the moon a little bit brighter but you want to dim the background so you have a dark background as well so again 
adjusting the histogram slightly and then stretch it out will help to bring it out a little bit more. Now, as you can see here, if we just minimize that, and we do all, okay, there we go. So we've just brought out the levels just a, t a tad bit, a little bit on the histogram. Again, you can do a bit of color mixing, you can just create a bit of saturation of the image, make it sort of, you know, a bit more of the detail and all that. But I don't really like it, to honest you, because if you start to saturate the, the image and you go too much, you make it lot you make it pixelated or and horrible. So and to be honest with you, I rather adjust the saturations using Photoshop. So again, I reset that and I minimize that. However, what you can do is you can flip and rotate. As you can see, we click on flip and rotate and we can just, uh, using the angle, we can start moving the, uh, the moon picture up and down. And obviously with the moon picture, like that, I, I have it so it's sort of at this angle here. So it's all upright like that. But again, you can you can readjust the this uh, rotation to suit your taste on how you want the moon to be flipped around or or sideways. So again, that's a good little setting. And again, if you're using a color image, you'll probably find you may get uh, some problems where the image might give out a sense of uh, false color. Okay. But there's no real false colour in there, so there's no need to do an RBG align. Uh, and again, this does the same process, RBG balance. Again, if, you get, if you're using refractor and you've got a bit of blue halo, you can help to minimise that by click on the auto balance button. And that will help to get rid of some of the false colour. Not all of it, but it helps a little bit. So again, click on auto balance. And it gets rid of some of the false colour. And again, that's the settings I usually go for. You can resize the image, you can have the moon shot even closer, but believe me, this is a big shot. So I never want to be bothering with resize the image. And I don't bother with all the denoise and de-ringing effects. Right? I just leave them alone, same as the world that filter. Just leave that alone. And then once you're happy with results, you click on do all. And then you have your final process stacked image. So now what we're going to do, you're going to save it. So what we're doing now, we're going to save this image. And again, we're going to call it moon stacked. Okay, so we'll call it moon stacked. We're going to leave it as a TIFF file. Because TIFF files are good when you're processing. You don't want to stack it into a low format file. Keep it to TIFF 16-bit RGB. And we're going to put it to our desktop file. And we're going to save it. We Now we can close down Registack 6. We need to maintain as much memory. So now you're happy. You've got the final stack image. Now, just to show a bit of interest for you guys and girls is... We've got the moon still picture and we've got the AVI file. Okay, well, this is the AVR file we've got. Okay, and this is the stacked uh, moon picture. And as you can see, there's a lot of detail in there. Okay, this is just opened up in Paint Shop. And yeah, you can really see now what a difference a stacked image with all the sharpness uh, and, and all the effects that help to bring out all that detail and you can see there's tons of detail so now we're gonna do we're gonna open up my program that I can use now you can use any Photoshop but I'm using the, the latest uh, Photoshop now Photoshop CC 2015 and this you can download this for a trial period of about a couple of weeks and then it will ask you to buy the program. And because Photoshop, you can buy this as a whole program. But personally, I like to buy it as a monthly thing using direct debit. It costs around eight, eight pounds to uh, use this program per month. And it's not bad and I use it all the time. 
and basically you know, it's going to be loads of fantastic tools you can play about with Photoshop and again what we'll do is we're going to open up our stacked image here's our moon st stacked and we're going to open that file okay you don't really need to do a lot of processing with this image okay there's a lot of Im uh, stuff on there in there that there's not much you can go about with but the thing with Photoshop is there is just certain things that you can just really pop out some more detail that you just can't simply can't but with certain programs and what we do is before we do anything you're gonna highlight the background you do not want to re you want to set different layers and you don't want to curate uh, do any photo editing on your existing picture you want a copy of that because if you make a mistake you can go back to the original photo and then get rid of your layers so we're going to duplicate the layer we select OK and then we go on to our brightness or curves and contrast so we click on that button here okay and again if you make a mistake you just click the right button and you basically delete that layer okay and it basically gets rid of that layer you'll then go back to your original copy so you click on your right hand button and then click on duplicate the layer and click ok then go into your uh, levels and again our levels are already been adjusted because we've done this on Registack 6 but if you find that you're not happy with it and you want to adjust your levels and make it brighter, like so. But if you go too much brighter, uh, you end up cutting into the detail and you start losing the detail. So again, you back it off. You don't want to lose all that detail and start clipping the photo. But again, there's no real need to adjust the levels. So again, we click right button and we delete that layer. There's no need to do that. So we go again, background copy, uh, select the tab button here, and we go into uh, curves. So we have a look on curves. Now curves are good because you can uh, like dim down certain areas in the picture, or you can increase some of the, uh, the, the areas where the detail is. And again, you just adjust it to suit your needs. And again, if you make a mistake, you can click on the trash cam button to eliminate uh, the uh, the curves thing and again you can just certain curves to give you a different effect and help to boost the, the detail once you're happy with the curves click on the background copy again pressing right uh, click on your mouse and then select duplicate layer and it creates another layer and then again select uh, the adjustments again on that tab and then this is probably my favorite tool using Photoshop uh, 2015 and this is the exposure exposure is really good because what this does is really handy particularly when you're taking deep sky objects uh, this tool is, is very powerful it helps to bring out all the fainter detail and what that does is also you can darken the background and pop out the four detail ground forward at the top of it so again if you just your exposure you can really just get some of the detail popping out from there okay again it takes a while because uh, certain also I'm, I'm, I'm filming at the moment so it's using a lot of memory on my computer because I'm recording uh, if I wasn't recording this wouldn't take this long so it takes a while to just pop it out uh, for it to process <clears throat> so just bear with me on this uh, again using offset as well if you select offset here you can darken the background but because the background is relatively dark anyway it will not recognize it but again if you have a light background you are able to darken the background using the darken the, uh, the foreground behind so there's no real uh, reason to adjust that because it's already dark but again it's here to show you what you can do with Photoshop so we go into a saturation 
and you can then you want to if you want to add a bit of color to it to make it really stand out you or you want to make it brighter but again be careful with saturation you don't want to add too much that it's going to basically gonna, uh, create color but you're going to lose some of the detail so again be careful when you use saturation what we could do is you can actually help to bring out some more uh, detail I select filter here I'm going to sharpen and I'm going to do a bit of smart sharpening and I like smart sharpening because as well as being a, a, sh a sharpened image there this can uh, really bring out some more sharpness without sacrificing the image so again if I press down the minimum button there and basically this is our image at the moment it's a bit too uh, out of place so again you can adjust the sharpening levels to how much you want to sharpen up okay I keep it to about 300 setting for time being and then you then reduce this by the radius so again you want to lower this down to a manageable level if you can't see it very well you just go into it again and as you see there's there's too much there and you can see that the sharpness is starting to really just just start to ruin too much of the image so again once you're happy that you've got your sharpness you can also help to reduce the noise as well if you've got uh, any pixelated uh, pictures or hot spots in the in the picture you can help to reduce the noise so once you're happy with your image say so like uh, you know that's a bit too much so I'll basically cut down the noise a bit okay it's helped to bring out a tad more I'll cut a look I just get rid of the radius again so once you're happy with your settings you just click on OK and it will now process a slightly sharpened image and once you're happy as you see there's tons of detail in that image and uh, I'm quite happy with the results and all you do is because it's a TIFF file you can then just save the image save as I always keep your original picture as uh, obviously keep it as a PS image to TIFF okay but it'd be a massive file okay you can save it to a desktop this is our, uh, our final process picture and there you go uh, as you see there tons of detail I've really brought out some of the detail there and uh, it looks like a uh, like a 3d effect sort of image but to say that's a full moon I'm really impressed in the, on the results so again I hope this video guide helps you uh, make you uh, understand how to get a, a moonshot and how to really bring out the, uh, the, the detail in a moonshot and make it absolutely amazing again there are many astral photographers out there who use different processes and different techniques to bring out certain details some people like to add uh, a loads of multicolors to it to give a, a, a really good uh, sort of full color image but again everyone's got different techniques but this technique works best for me and for to for beginners who want a really an outstanding image using pip using Registax 6 and then a little bit of processing is all I need for Photoshop just to bring it out just a tad more and and again looking at that image there if we just minimize that and we set it to our background okay that's our image there we just process and we look forward to seeing more of your amazing moon pictures so I hope you find this uh, video guide very helpful please feel free to comment and please subscribe to uh, my YouTube channel as you see I have loads of uh, videos 
and again please please watch the videos just to help you guys and girls out into astronomy and uh, again uh, look forward to a new video guys and we're going to show you a series of my uh, moon pictures that I've done using this technique and uh, see what you think so thanks again thanks for watching and clear skies to you all